And it all comes down to this. Kay Dillard on the pole. It's the 157 of Mike Marler on the outside. 50 laps, $26,000 on the line as they flash by the Posky's Performance Parts Speed Camp. We are racing here in the desert. Off into turns one and two. Marler will shoot to the lead up top. Down low, it's Kay Dillard. And it'll be Larson in third. Bobby Pierce back in fourth. Here comes the two of Stormy Scott. He rides back in fifth. Lap number one, Mike Marler battled for the lead last year. Couldn't get the win. He leads lap one of 50 here tonight. Kay Dillard going to be in second side by side for the third spot right now is the six of Kyle Larson and the 32 of Bobby Pierce. They stay side by side down the back straightaway in that battle for the third spot. Mike Marler is your race leader at the end of lap number two. Dillard second, Pierce able to work his way by the six of Kyle Larson. And right now, Larson runs in the fourth spot, and the two of Stormy Scott sits in fifth behind them. It's the 58 of Garrett Albertson in sixth. Brandon Shepard now going to step to the outside of the speedway as he currently runs in position number seven. And Mike Marler setting a brutal pace early in this one. Back in the second spot, the 97 of Kay Dillard. In the third spot, it's Pierce. Now Pierce comes after Dillard for position number two off turn number four. I feel like I've seen this movie before, Ben, maybe as recently as uh, just a few days ago. Uh, the 32 of Bobby Pierce dropping back, maybe losing a spot at the start of the race and then rallying. But as Trenton Berry told us uh, there during the track rework, he said this thing was going to be hammered out for a few laps. We're going to see this thing widen out just a little bit as this race goes on. You're going to see that top side come in a little more. There's a good look at the battle for position number four, five laps into this one. And right now it's, it's uh, Marler. Dillard, Pierce, and there's that battle for fourth on your screen between Kyle Larson, Stormy Scott, and Garrett Alberson. Well, your top two tap dancer on the top side of this FK Rod in Zvato Speedway Park. Pierce has been working the low to middle side of the racetrack back in the third spot, and it is a longer race. It's the longest we've seen all week. Meanwhile, back in fourth, you see it on your screen, Stormy Scott to the inside of Kyle Larson, and you got the 58 car right there of Garrett Alberson. He rides back in sixth, as there's your gap from first to second, as in the second spot up top, it's Kay Dillard, Bobby Pierce down low, and DJ Pierce is starting to bring that low groove in as they battle off into three and four while your leader has a 1.1 second advantage. That's Mike Marler. Yeah, Pierce bringing the low groove in. I don't know that we're going to see the 32 there for the entire race, though. Uh, he will find out when the time is right. I think you're going to see that low voltage solutions over trucking 32 go to the high side of the racetrack here maybe in just a few laps. This happens 1.2 seconds behind your race leader, Mike Marler. Marler comes by to complete lap number nine, and Pierce is able to cut a couple tenths off of the 157's lead, and here comes Bobby Pierce. Bobby Pierce on the prowl last time by, nine-tenths of a second. Marler up top, Pierce down low. Pierce maybe a little bit different tire, a little bit different groove. That time at the line, he's going to cut into the lead more. Six-tenths of a second. He's taken three-tenths of a second each of the last two laps off Marler's lead. Marler's going to change his groove, though, as he moves down the racetrack. Down in one and two at least, three and four. Marler up top, down low is Pierce. The lead was, the lead was six-tenths of a second last time by. This time at the line, it's Mike Marler by four-tenths of a second over Pierce. And DJ, they're catching the back of the pack as we work lap 12. Read my mind, man. Just as uh, just as Bobby Pierce closes in on Mike Marler, that lead duo closes in on the tail end of the field, and they've got about seven cars running about seven different lines around this racetrack. Pierce peeking her nose down to the inside of Marler in one and two. Marler's going to duck back down to the bottom. I know that he can keep the 157 yeah. blue clear to the inside of the racetrack, though, coming off turn number two, and now Marler changes his line again in three and four. Marler's moved down there, searching that ring of brown on the low side of the racetrack. The lead last time was a tenth of a second. This time, it's three tenths of a second. Now, Marler's going to do the top side down in turn one and two. And DJ, I think part of it might be that car wasn't comfortable down low. But if he leaves that bottom open for Pierce right now, Pierce is going to get by him. And they're catching the back of the pack, who, by the way, three <laughs> wide at the back of the field. Lap 14, new leader, Bobby Pierce. Bobby Pierce out front. And I don't know if we can pan out and show you the back of the field in front of your race leaders. I mean, it is two by two by two all the way in front of them, about seven cars deep or so. So things, yeah, there it is. Things are about to get interesting as Bryson James gets into the outside wall over in turns three and four. Bobby Pierce out front, and he's going to put James between himself and the 157. And now if you're the 32, where do you go? Well, right now, wherever you want to, that's the answer, DJ, is he has just been unbelievable in the desert this week. Pierce is going to go to work in the middle of the track through turns three and four. Really haven't seen him there so far. He's been on the bottom, and he's stretching it out over Marler that time by eight-tenths of a second as now Pierce sets his sights to put a lap on Sam Mars out of two down the back straightaway. But Mars and Stuck 
luckier side by side in front of your leader. Yeah, if you're Bobby Pierce, I mean, certainly you know you got a one hundred thousand dollar payday on the line, so you know that you got to go. You know you got a really uh, solid field behind you. In the same sense, I'm not entirely sure how much you want to force the issue as well, and maybe put yourself in a precarious position. Just as we say that Pierce trying oh, to thread man. the needle down the back straightaway with Stucky on the outside, Mars on the inside, who hit the whoop de doo down in turn number three. He'll clear both those race cars off the corner. Bobby Pierce out front on lap 18. Working lap 19 off into one and two, and Pierce goes around Stucky. He clears Mars. He'll set aside on Bagley down the back straightaway. Marler in second. Kate Diller third. Stormy Scott fourth. Kyle Larson a, de a distant fifth, and it's Alberson, Strand, Shepard, Sorensen, and Weiss. That's your top ten. Well, Mike Marler has made a nice move to work by a couple of the back markers there in the 157 and close a little bit of that gap between himself and Bobby Pierce as you look back now on the battle for third. That's Kate Dillard in the 97, Stormy Scott in the 2S, and again, this happens uh, less than a second behind Mike Marler. Wow, what a move there by Dillard. 20 laps in the books, 30 laps to go in the Rio Grande Way Services 50 presented by Shaw Truck. And Marler's gone back to work on the top side of the racetrack. He took almost two tenths off of Bobby Pierce's lead last time. Now Pierce is going to go to the top side down in turns three and four, and he's going to follow the number 10, a honeycut around the cushion. Marler did not get a good run off of four, and he loses wholesale ground to the tune of five tenths a second to your leader. Yeah, that he hopped the cushion just a little bit there coming off corner number four, did Mike Marler, and that cost him ground as Stormy Scott been, you may, you called this a couple days ago, Stormy Scott's been low-key good in that Category 5 race car 2S. He's finally able to work his way by Kate Dillard, put Stormy Scott up to position number three. Well, we work lap 23, this 50-lap affair down the back straightaway, and it's been all Bobby Pierce for about the past six laps since he got to the lead. And, DJ, he can just put that 32 car wherever he wants, and we've seen it here the past four nights. And really, if not for a little bit of a mistake, because we're about to have a Midwest Sheet Metal Caution right in front of your leader, Colin Weinbarger, will draw that Midwest Sheet Metal Caution with 23 down, 27 to go. He I, and Weinbarger broke something up there in the middle of turns three and four. I saw something come off the race car. It was right in front of Pierce, and I'm not too sure the 32 didn't run over it at the top side of the racetrack. I don't know what it was that broke or if maybe it was a chunk of a tire, but something came off that 14S. It was right in the groove, right in front of Pierce, and Pierce ran over it, and it it's is part of the right yep. rear. Yep. Well, Trenton Berry heading your way down in the Mar Mary's Home Furnishing hot pit area. It is Colin Weinbarger. Bryce and James already down there out of this race earlier. As you see, a new right rear tire is going to have to go on that 14. Uh, we still have 27 laps to go. Bobby Pierce took the lead a few laps into this one, and he's going to bring the field to the Rio Grande Way Services starting zone. And we're back underway. Sandy Bonnie Green flag is out, and Pierce takes him off into one and two at the point. Started third in this one, got to the lead. Here comes Larson to the outside of Marler and Kyle Larson on the move. A year ago, it was the Pierce, Larson, and Marler show with Pierce coming out on top. Is Kyle Larson on the move? He's been charging every night in the features, DJ. He's just started deep. We'll see if he can do anything as he moves up to third behind Stormy Scott with Bobby Pierce continuing to lead the way. Kate Dillard back and forth. Marler shuffled back to fifth on the restart with Alberson in sixth. And again, Jason Strand, great run right now in seventh, as you said. Yeah, Jason Strand, he's not only in seventh, he's trying to work his way around Garrett Alberson to move into the sixth spot as well. Speaking of moving up spots, Kyle Larson on the move in the Kevin Rumley number six is that time by at the stripe. He was able to inch out ahead of Stormy Scott, and we'll see if the 2021 NASCAR Cup Series champion has anything for Bobby Pierce. It was eight-tenths of a second last time by Pierce over Larson that time. Eight-tenths of a second, and now Pierce goes to the top side as Larson will hops across the bottom of one and two, as does Stormy Scott. And I tell you what, right now, these guys are searching for these grooves, but that allows Pierce to really pull away as we come back complete lap 27. I don't know if you saw it, Ben. Pierce got an absolute monster momentum run off the high side down in turns one and two and he's found a really good group to his liking he's coming in a little bit lower he's not rim riding all the way around uh, the racetrack especially down in one and two and now he does it in three and four as well he comes in in the middle he lets the tail end of that car catch the fluff or catch the cushion and of course just as I say that he proves me wrong goes right back to the top down in turns one and two but that's enabled him then to stretch out to a 1.2 second lead here on lap 28 yeah he added it he added a tenth last time by as we work off turn number four and it looks like he is starting to stretch it out on Larson. Larson is searching for different grooves, but he's losing time. He gives up another tenth to Bobby Pierce. And what can you say? This kid's good right now, man. He is he's good. He's confident. He's pulling away from the pack. And we've seen him. I mean, we, we've seen him lead every lap. We've seen him fall back to sixth and win. We've seen a little bit of everything. And right now, he has got a 1.4 second advantage with 20 laps to go. Good battle there on your screen. That's the battle for fourth between Mike Marler and Kate Dillard. They have been racing each other hard out there on the speedway. Dillard in the 97, of course. Marler uh, behind the wheel of the uh, Greg Bruning, the Skyline Motorsports number 157. Marler had the four spot last time by. Dillard's going to work his way around him this time by. Just in front 
front of them is Stormy Scott, but this this battle for uh, third, fourth, and fifth, that all happens about two and a half seconds behind your race leader, Bobby Pierce, and uh, Bobby Pierce's lead over Kyle Larson is about to expand because Larson just scrubbed off a little speed down in three and four. Yeah, right now, it seems like if the longer green flag runs, Pierce maybe gets a little bit better, and Larson's car maybe gets a little free or tight, hard to tell which one. Right now, though, the two cars, Stormy Scott rides back in third, Dillard in fourth, Caden Honeycutt out of it. Well done this weekend, young man. You've done a great job out here in the desert, has Honey. Caden Honeycutt, can't wait to see more out of him in a dirt car the rest of the year. Absolutely. Certainly earned a few fans, including you and I here this week. Uh, we hear fans in us here this week as well. As Bobby Pierce, you said it best, man. He's able to put that 32 about anywhere he wants to on the racetrack. But don't look now. Kyle Larson is closing in a hurry. He just took a half a second off of Pierce's lap time last time. I'm not sure if Pierce slipped up, wasn't paying attention that close. We'll see what we get this time by. 1.1 seconds was the advantage. And Larson has found something down in three and four in that time at the line. Seven Seven tenths of a second as Larson takes four tenths off Bobby Pierce's time of uh, his lead, and they are running the exact same group, and they're catching heavy lap traffic as we work lap 36. Ooh, this is about to get interesting right here. James Essex, we love you, brother. We need a PSG. Please stay green because this thing is going to get real interesting. Larson takes another two tenths off of Bobby Pierce's lead, and as they close in on some more lap traffic, this thing is about to get real. Coming around this time by 37 laps in the books, 13 laps to go. And Pierce is going to make some decisions into lap traffic. Kyle Beard up there near his groove. Meanwhile, Larson lost a lot of time that lap. I don't know what happened, DJ, but he loses eight tenths to your leader. And now Pierce thinks about a slider. Oh, he will do it in front of Kyle Beard. Caution to the wind as he knows it's go time. Larson's given up a lot of space. He was right there with him, DJ, but now it is a 1.4 second advantage for Bobby Pierce. Larson's missed his mark the last couple of laps. He missed it a little bit down in turn two the lap before, and then he also missed it coming off turn number four, and that's what's allowed Pierce to uh, spread that lead back out to 1.4 seconds. Kyle Larson had trimmed it down to six tenths this time by. Let's take a look. Larson's able to cut another three tenths off of it. Live by the sword, die by the sword, man. When KL hits his mark, he is the fastest car on the track. Well, Pierce has got side by side lap traffic in front of him. We race back to 10 to go. Larson's trying to get there as fast as he can. Lap traffic might be his chance if he's going to get to him. Ten laps to go in the lead. Eight tenths of a second. Three tenths comes off Bobby Pierce's lead. Yeah, where's Bobby Pierce going to go? Well, he's able to work by Mikey Kyle in the 25. Now he's going to try to drive underneath Colin Weinbarger in the 14S. That may scrub off a little bit of speed. Kyle Larson is right there. One lap car now between he and Bobby Pierce. Here comes Larson. Larson thinking about a slider down in turns one and two. Pierce drives back around him, working lap 42. Pierce pulls away down the back straightaway. Larson back to second. And here comes Kyle Larson. He's going to get another run, build up on the high side of the racetrack, man. This looks like a repeat of one year ago in the Wild West shootout finale as Colin Weinbarger's off the pace on the front straightaway. He's going to go to the Mary's Home Furnishings home pit. Eight to go. Eight tenths of a second. The lead now with eight laps to go. The race back to seven to go. Young hands a groove down from Bobby Pierce. Pierce in heavy lap traffic. Young hands brings it up to the fence. And again, Larson gives a little bit away down there in turn number four as Pierce running the top to perfection right now. Larson's trying to get there. DJ seven to figure it out. Yeah, he's got two lap cars in front of him. It's going to be the 18 of Chase Young hands and the other 18 oh, of Pierce. Oh, Pierce over the cushion down in turns three and four. Here comes Larson. Oh, Larson gives him a shot in the shorts coming off turn number four. Pierce may have a tire going down in the 32. Oh, a on the 32 car, and the Midwest Sheet Metal Caution is out with six laps remaining. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Heartbreak wow. Hotel for Bobby Pierce, uh, who was six laps away from a potential $100,000 Penske Pater jackpot bonus. Oh, man, a $75,000 flat time. More than that, really, 100000 with the to win. He's got a $25,000 bonus. Trent and Barry, they are down in the Mary's Home Furnishing Hot Pit, Heartbreak City for Bobby Pierce. And we're going to say I believe we have an FK Rodden's instant replay as well. Trent, give us an update, and I tell you what, Tiffany, let's roll the uh, instant replay on top of it. Yeah, here we go. The crew going to work there as everybody at home is taking a look there at the FK Rodden's instant replay uh, with Bobby Pierce rolling on the top side of turn number four. Crew going to work on the right side here as they're going to pull off the tire and get set to put a new one on here with Adam with a uh, uh, great wow. shot down here as the tire that basically exploded and came apart somewhat here in turn four and uh, the crew getting the five lug nuts put back on it to send him back out.
Trent, you nailed it. It, it. We just saw in that FK Rod ends this replay, and the fans did at home as well. That tire was down coming off turn number four, as we saw. We saw him bobble a little bit there in the middle of three and four. A great shot there by Adam Marsh in the infield. And uh, man, oh man, that is not only does that readjust uh, the uh, this one hundred thousand dollar to win uh, Pen uh, Penske pay dirt jackpot. It could that, cost him the championship. It could cost him the week long series championship as well, Ben. So coming into the event, he had a fifty four point lead over Kay Dillard. So Kay Dillard right now rides in third, and it's going to put Bobby Pierce. We'll re be restarting on the back of the pack. This is going to get close, guys, as, as he's trying to get a three thousand dollar championship. And race fans, you're new leader now Kyle Larson out of Elk Grove California as he tries to pick up his first ever Rio Grande Way Services Wild West shootout win but he's got Cade Dillard behind him and I said Cade Dillard in third he's actually second now Marler in third Stormy Scott in fourth six laps remain so with, with six to go we will double them up here's the other thing too Kyle Larson has never officially led a lap in no. the Wild West shootout. He's been out front at close. various times, but he's never officially led a lap at the scoring loop. He will be the leader on this Delaware double file restart. Six laps to go. Larson, Dillard, Marler, Scott, Alberson, your top five as they head into the Rio Grande Waste Services restart zone. And we are back underway with six to go and car six out in front. Meanwhile, Marler and Dillard go at it for the second spot. It's go time in the desert, DJ. Off at turn number two down the back straightaway, Kyle Larson shot out of a cannon. Yeah, and Garrett Alberson's got a head full of steam on the high side of the speedway as well. Again, that is a live by the sword, die by the sword groove on the top side of the racetrack. Five laps to go. Larson, Marler, Dillard, Alberson, Stormy Scott, your top five. And here comes Alberson after Dillard down the back straightaway. Hang on as they go at it. Meanwhile, off turn number four, we'll have four laps remaining as Las Cruces on Las Cruces. Violence down there with Stormy Scott and Garrett Alverson. Scott will lose some ground. Alverson takes the spot. Four laps remain. Alverson up to fourth. 1.2 seconds the advantage that last time by for Kyle Larson and he may stretch that out because Mike Marler hooked a rut down in turns one and two and scrubbed off a little bit of speed. This time by just three laps to go. Kyle Larson three laps away from a 26 thousand dollar payday here in the desert and drake troutman out of this one they race back to two to go and he is gone is larson 1.8 seconds the advantage and two to go from the rio grand way services flag stand back in second it is marler third is dillard fourth right now garrett alverson fifth stormy scott dj this time out of turn four the white flag will be displayed bobby pierce trying to work his way back up through the field he's inside the top 10 but unless there's a midwest sheet metal caution it'll be too little too late larson takes the white flag Working off into turns one and two, white flag in the air, down the back straightaway. Tonight at FK Rod Ends Vado Speedway Park, the Rio Grande Way Services 50, presented by Shaw Trucking. For the first time ever, your winner out of Elk Grove, California, Car 6 and Kyle Larson. Second spot, a distant second, is going to be the 157 of Mike Marler, nearly three seconds back. Kate Dillard finishes third, Garrett Albertson fourth, and Stormy Scott rounds out the top five in a wild finish to the Rio Grande Way Services 50 presented by Shaw Trucking and there's still one bit of business yep. left to take care of. I do want to note Bobby Pierce gets back to position seven. He will be your champion in the division. He will get the Dirt Track Bank Super Late Model Championship presented by Black Diamond Race Cars. Jason Babiak going to hand in the cowboy hat and Kyle Larson's going to get to fire the pistols here with a little bit of victory fuel on the dash. Let's hear it for Kyle Larson. Set those back on the uh, side of the race car. Grab that can of Victory Fuel. Kyle, your race. As he gets a congratulations there from Kevin Rumley, the rest of the KL team right there that has worked so hard on the race car and giving him a, a great piece to run here this weekend. Kyle, you're going to get $25,000 at the pay window, okay? But tonight's race was $26,000 courtesy of Carl Chevrolet Cash. There's your first $1,000 uh, that we're going to pay you out for this. You really had that thing wound up on the high side. It looked like you were a lot better after that first yellow and kind of had a chance to reset. Did the car feel better to you? Yeah, I felt like uh, just before the caution, my tires were, were coming in good, and I had you know good traction at that point. The top was starting to come in as well, one and two, and... Um, yeah, the restart just kind of worked out for me to get to second and was just making tons of mistakes behind Bobby trying to run really hard. I didn't, you know, I was trying to peek at the board to see how many laps are left and 
felt like we were running a long run there and um, just pushing too hard. And yeah, he kept getting away. And then I get back to him. So my, I mean, my car, I think our tire selection maybe was better than his is all, but uh, our car was good as well against the cushion. I didn't feel great around the bottom early, but up top, I, I was good. So um, huge thank you to everybody on this team because they've been busting their butts uh, this whole time. It's been pretty, pretty miserable couple weeks, honestly. Um, you know, just the first part of the night anyways, you know, racing's been good and fun. Um, it's just been a lot of work. And uh, so you can't thank them enough uh, for, for working that hard. It was, it was definitely tough. So cool to get in victory lane. Um, just uh, wish that uh, it would have happened a little differently there off of four. I think, I think it was, I, it, who knows, uh -oh, we've got the video. His tire went down off turn number four. Well, that's good to know because yeah, I did get up underneath him a little bit, and um, I just assumed it was, it was my nose that cut his tire. So um, I wasn't too excited, you know, inheriting, inheriting the lead like that. But you know, that definitely makes me feel better. So uh, I hate that for Bobby. You know, either way, whether you know, I give him the flat or not, you know, I, I wanted to race it out with him. Uh, he obviously had a lot of money on the line tonight too, and and you know if I couldn't win, it would have been cool to see him take home that that bonus money. But um, it's always fun racing him. You know, it's uh, he he him and I have very similar driving styles, and um, you know there's there's not many guys that can hustle a late model like he can. So. Like I said, it's fun to race with them. Wish we could have raced it out because I think it was getting ready to, to get good there down the front stretch into one. But um, yeah, just uh, all for not, I guess, on his end. But uh, his team did a hell of a job all last year, especially you know, these couple weeks. So uh, I'm sure they'll have an even better season than they had last year. Track owner Royal Jones would like to congratulate you real quick. And I'm going to have one more question for you. How, how satisfying, how pleasing? I, I know how much you want to be fast all the time in this race car. We've talked a lot about how, how tough it is, and this didn't come as easy to you as a lot of other things. What kind of emotions do you have right here? Yeah, it's uh, it's obviously, obviously very exciting. These are, these are by far the toughest vehicles, most confusing vehicles for me to figure out how to drive. I, I don't, I mean, the mechanic side of it, a sprint car is confusing to me on the mechanic side of it, and they're way simpler than these, but I try to even not understand anything about these. I just try to focus on driving, and that's that's tough enough. So uh, I've been qualifying so bad, and, and tonight I finally we ran the middle and, and went quick time. So maybe I was just running the wrong line all week, but uh, they're just they're so hard, and it's such a challenge for me to, to try and figure it out. And I think that's, that's you know, honestly, what uh, what I like and hate about it, you know, it's uh, I get so frustrated in these things more than any other car that I run. And uh, but when you win, it's it's also very satisfying. Or when you have runs where you go from 22nd to fifth or whatever. So um, and again, you know, I, I can't do it without this team. They work so hard. Longhorn, Billstein, Flow Racing, uh, Deanie Marine, everybody who helps out a part of this this six car. It's uh, it's always fun to get to come and run. It's it's really relaxing. I feel bad for Kevin too. I mean, he he has to deal with me who like I. I said I'm so confused in these things all the time he asks me what I feel and I really don't know what I feel to tell him so um, <laughs> I'm penalizing him <laughs> more than anything but uh, it, it, like I said it's rewarding when you can finally win man great job Royal Jones it means a lot to have Kyle Larson here oh my goodness we're so proud to have him I've been following him for quite some time of course he's been racing forever but I remember going out to Northern California and he won at Chico and the next night I went to wherever they went and on a Monday night it was I always go out there and watch Steve race all the time yeah, and you, Steve ran first, he ran second. Steve gave him a big old hug and lifted him up, and Steve told me up there in Victor Lane, he said, keep an eye on this boy, he's, he's going somewhere, he's something. And I remember going to Knoxville one time, and going, I was kind of drunk, but I went up in suite, and I was, I, I was with Jeff Gordon, and I told Jeff Gordon, I said, I'm a racer, but I'm a professional race watcher. I can ra watch races better than I can race it. And I said, this young man right here, I said, watch out for him, you guys need to get him on your team. I sure he didn't listen to me, I was drunk, but, but anyway, I, I pretty much, told Jeff Gordon that Hendrick Motorsports needed to have this young man on their team and eventually they got him but man I just it means so much to me for you to be here thank you. you're a great person and a great family person and thank you thank you for all you do and thank you so much I'm glad you finally got your win here you got a bunch of seconds now you got a first so thank you so much thanks a lot man awesome to hear that how about track owner Royal Jones right there as well as Kyle Larson all right, well, Trenton, I'm glad that uh, you and Royal are done holding hands down there. We'll give you an opportunity to make your way down. And Com 380 at Missouri State University, my junior year as a broadcast journalism major. Under no circumstances do you ever 
hand over the microphone. And you know what you didn't, by golly. All right. <laughs> oh, that was well, – we're having a good laugh up <laughs> here in the We've got our press second box, and third place friend. finishers and our champion down there as we'll head down to your second place finisher, Mike Marler and Kate Dillard in third. Down here to Mike Marler, man, you were, you were kind of in and out of the podium all night. Walk us back through your race there and uh, how it all played out. Well, you know, I, I I feel like I did everything right. I just ain't ain't got the speed right now. I'm just way too free and loose and slidey and wiggled my butt around in the seat all I could and tried every line and up on the wall and down on the tires and all that and just uh, just couldn't hold them off. But uh, uh, you know, uh, we're we're doing our best and we'll we'll keep working at it. And it's just uh, just kind of a tough thing to figure out. But we we're getting there daily day day by day. And every track's different, you know. But uh, but uh, no enough whining about that. You know, congratulations to Bobby and on you know, the week he's had and Kyle there for for winning the race. And uh, me and Cade was racing there, had a lot of fun. So uh, hate that for Bobby, man. I was I was kind of bummed for him when he had that flat, but uh, he could have made him a bunch of money right there. So. So part of it, I guess, and uh, we'll go on to the next one. But I just want to thank everybody that's tuned in all week and watched us every night and supported this deal, man. This deal's growing and growing and getting bigger and bigger. And just really want to thank Royal and, and all the staff here for having us out. Uh, it's a fun way to come out, kickstart the year, and, and uh, wish, you know, wish we could have won one this year, but second's the best we had a couple times, and uh, we're happy with that, and we'll just work on it from there. But more than all, I just most of all want to thank everybody, you know, for supporting the deal and coming out and watching and putting it on the whole deal. Man, you're going to get a bunch of them this year. Mikey Marler, the 157 there. We'll talk to uh, slide over here and talk to the Pierce team in just a minute. We're going to wrap up the podium with Kate Dillard as well. Boy, you you battled a lot. Both the late models, the modifieds. You 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 kind of set the pace early with your late model. And I think of everything else out of this week on this side, you showed that uh, you're probably going to be a force to be reckoned with, and your stuff's really good right now. Yeah, I hope so. You know, we've been working hard at it, and all in all, it's a good week. Uh, you know, to have like we had a top three card tonight, we brought it home third, and uh, congrats to, uh, you know, Kyle and uh, the week Bobby had, and just uh, all in all, it's been a great week. You know, I enjoy coming to this place, and, uh, you know, we've had a lot of good runs, and very fortunate for that, and just uh, hopefully we can uh, finish the week out with a good run in the mod as well. All right, buddy. Great effort this week. Kate Dillard in the 97. Trenton Berry will grab a word with the driver that suffered just a ton of heartbreak. As a small consolation, though, he does get the week-long mini-series championship. It's Bobby Pierce. I know it's kind of a consolation prize probably to you at this point. You, you are the 2024 champion of the Wild West Shootout, Rio Grande Way Services Wild West Shootout. Congratulations for that. Let's start with how in the world did that tire go down? Yeah, I don't know. I think just, you know, six races here. Uh, Parts fall off cars, it gets knocked up in the cushion and running up there, you know. Sometimes you're just the unlucky one. We've been uh, pretty lucky and fast all week. Right here at the end, it bit us. Um, you know, I think I must have just ran something over and it went right away. So, you know, Kyle got into me here, but that was after my tire was already going flat off the corner. So I was slowing down and uh, nothing he did there. So uh, just one of them deals, man. Gosh dang, were you, were you thinking prior to that, like, all right, we, we're, we're going to get this thing done? Yeah, I uh, was pretty confident, like, around, like, 20, 15 to go. Wasn't really feeling pressured, and then um, I, I knew Larson was closing in on me. I saw the six on the board in second, and um, my dad was telling me to get back up on the wheel, and I was feeling like I was getting pretty loose. You know, I don't know if my tires sealed up or what, but um, I was really shocked the tires he went with that it worked like that. But, you know, his left rear, he could really uh, abuse that thing and get it going running that cushion. So... Uh, worked out and um, for him, and uh, you know he ran a heck of a race. Uh, all in all, we're we're happy with our week. Um, you know I can't thank my guys enough, all these fans for watching all week. And uh, you know if we would have won that first night out, and if we would have been going for six tonight, I would have feel uh, felt really bad. And uh, you know maybe the insurance company won't feel uh, too bad now. They don't lose as much money. So hopefully they come back and do it again next year and come back and win all six of them. $25,000 and a whole lot of maturity there out of your interview this week and tonight here. Congratulations on a great week. Bobby Pierce, your Rio Grande Way Services Wild West Shootout Champion for 2024.